And <clears throat> I started throwing up a lot. And I'm like, my ankle swell, I'm throwing up. I know I ain't pregnant. So at this point, it Were gotta be sure? something. You just I was sure. Like, I was like, I know I ain't Did pregnant. You know who the baby dad was? I don't know, but we was gonna figure it out. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome uh -oh. back. We are with y'all with the Mighty Mac here. Once again, we're cooking with the blind. But it's, today it's not really a cooking video, guys. It's just a little story that I got to tell you guys about, you know, being on dialysis or the struggles of being on dialysis. So come cook with me and I'm gonna give you a little story today. So last year, um, in February, I found out I had a kidney disease which it progressed, um, it progressed very drastically um, in me. So May, maybe I wanna say by, the, by August of 2019, I found out that I had stage five kidney disease, which I wasn't in failure yet. And soon after in November, I was in kidney failure and they had to do an emergency surgery on me where they had to put a perm calf in. Um, for anybody who know what a perm calf is, it's a, catheter that goes in your chest right here. I had it like sticking out. Everybody thought it was like a big ass nipple ring or something. But it's a perm calf to do dialysis into my fistula was ready, which the fistula is in my arm. It's just like a big artery, um, a big artery in the vein. The, the thing that you guys are seeing now is I had an angioplasty the other day, which is why I got the stitches there and the vein. Um, I'm gonna explain what an angioplasty is in just a second. But I just wanted to give you guys a rundown on um, how it's been on dialysis and everything like that. So when I started my dialysis, they were using the perm calf for a few months, which was fine, you know. Oh, I thought that was cinnamon, sorry. <laughs> which is fine. I thought that um, it wasn't gonna hurt or anything like that, but Soon after, my fistula was ready. Um, in the process of the fistula, once you get it, you have to do these hand exercises that will strengthen your muscles. So once my fistula was ready, they did start using it, but they did infiltrate it, guys. And when I tell you the infiltration of your vein, it hurts. Your arm gets all swollen and big and bruised. Um, but once again, that's one of the joys of being on dialysis. Hence, joys. But... After you get used to it, you know, when you first started, for anybody who's going on dialysis or may have to go on dialysis soon, um, it's it's a struggle. You know, I'm not going to lie. It is a, it is tough in the beginning um, just because it tires you out um, based on how long you're there. It, it's also based on your weight and how many hours you're there, how good they're cleaning your blood, how good the blood flow is working. So it's one of those things is it's basically based off your weight because your weight determines how many hours you got to be on and everything like that. So because of my size, I do have to do four. I started at three and a half, but I wasn't, it wasn't cleaning my blood the way it should have been, which they moved me to four. Oh, they moved me to four hours. Um, and trust me, them extra 30 minutes on dialysis is strenuous. That it feels like you, 30 minutes feels like hours. And they're taking the fluid off um, of you. It's not really something that's painful as is going on, but getting hooked up with the needles. If you don't like needles, I'm a big um, needle phobe. I have, I'm, I'm very scared of needles. I don't, it's not that I'm not scared of them. It's my anxiety kicks in and I be thinking the needle's gonna break in me and stuff like that. But it does feel draining. It's exhausting that it takes, it feels like you just pulled a three ton truck across the America's interstate and stuff. So it, it's hard. Um, in the beginning, but you do get used to it After a while you never really get used to the tiredness of it or the exhaustion of it because it all depends on the cleaning that particular day um, so I just feel like that and when I when I, I am blind so when I Tell my seasonings I sniff them sometimes um, Not enough to put in my nose and get boogers or whatever it may fall out fall out your nose I don't know what's in y'all nose, but you know, I just make sure I know. Sometimes I know, like I know this is black pepper because I can, I know the shape of it. I only have Obey in my cabinet, which is like this, but because of this little tab here that I didn't take off, I know this is black pepper. 
So back to the story. Um, so when I had dialysis, they kept infiltrating my vein. They didn't know why they kept infiltrating the vein and they kept sending me to my, um, what does he call my vascular surgeon? And he kept saying that my arm is fine. There's nothing wrong with my arm. You know, they did, um, they, they didn't do an x-ray, but they did do an ultrasound and they didn't find anything. So they, the, they continued to use my arm um, and they kept infiltrating it because once again, they didn't find anything. Why am I seasoning this meat when I'm about to put it in water? This, that, this video threw me off. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm seasoning this meat, like, but it's just gonna bring more seasoning to it, so. Oh well, it's already done. But yeah, so back to what I was saying, the vascular surgeon kept saying that they didn't find anything um, in my arm, which the dialysis people kept saying it was something definitely wrong with it. Um, so my tech kept saying it's a narrowing. A narrowing, guys, is when your vein is constricted. It's like tight like this. Instead of opening where the blood can flow, it's tight. So it's making the blood hard to get through. So that's what a narrowing is, um, which is also called a stenosis because I was just going to get into what it was. But when I went to, they call it the access center for dialysis. When I went to the access center, the access center said I had 90% stenosis, which is what I just explained that my um, vein had a narrowing up here. Um, it wasn't so much in the arm, but it was in my, this is my clavicle area, but we just gonna call it whatever part it is right here. But it was right here about my armpit. So when they figured it out, the angioplasty, they did an angiogram first. Um, the angiogram is when they put lidocaine in my arm and they numb it up and then they put a needle with contrast in it. And that contrast goes through um, the lining and finds out where the blockage is or where the stenosis is. So in order to open that narrowing up in my artery, they had to do an angioplasty. And that is the painful part. So what they do is take a balloon, they, they open it up with a um, sheath. I would explain that to you, but I don't know what that is. So they, put, they open my arm up with a sheath, they put a balloon in and after that, I I can barely remember what happened because that pain was so drastic to, I was literally in tears on the table because it hurt it so bad and I had an anxiety attack. So I couldn't really re hear what they were saying because I was freaking out due to the anxiety attack. So all I remember hearing is them saying, hey, um, we need a stent. So the stent was, oh, that's a good amount. The stent that they put in my arm was um, an eight by 10 stent. And what the stent does is keep the artery open so the blood can flow through because without that stent, um, honestly, I don't know what would have happened because they really didn't give me a lot of details on it. But when I went back to my dialysis the next day, they said that, you know, you had a 90% stenosis in your arm. And the reason why I hurt it so bad is because they tried to do the balloon and they pumped it up, but the balloon wasn't pumping. Um, it only pumped it up to 75%. So it still wasn't opening up 100%. So that's why they put the stent in so they can get the um, blood, blood flowing the proper way. Um, but yeah, once again, that, that hurt it. Like if anybody ever have to get an angioplasty done, Please tell them to sedate you. Like, I know some people that not like drugs. Um, all jokes aside, just tell them to sedate you because they tell you that it's just feel like pressure, but it's it's really painful. For those who do not like pain, like me, I have a low tolerance for pain. Please tell them, please sedate me because I did see all the Almighty Mac YouTube video and he says it hurt. It hurts. They feel like somebody is literally separating your bones and pulling your bones apart. That's that's how that feels. Because you gotta remember, they're pumping up your veins. So they're putting something in your inside of your vein, pumping it up, letting it go down, pump it up again. And because my vein was so constricted and it wouldn't open, they had to do me multiple times. And those multiple times, I felt like, at this point, just chop the whole arm off. Y'all can have my whole arm and let's call this a day because I can't do this anymore. Like I really wanted to give up. And then at the end, and what, what tripped me out is at the end, the lady asked me, she was like, 
Do you want some milk? I mean, some cookies and juice. And I wanted to say, what I wanted to say, I'm not going to tell you guys because it is, a, it's, it's a little vulgar, got a little cuss words in it. But I wanted to say, listen here, lady. Do you want some cookies and juice? Because I was pissed off. Because I asked them, do this hurt? And can they put me in the twilight? Oh, yeah. Guys, I forgot to tell you. So tonight, I really wasn't, I, I, I forgot to like introduce the season and everything. But I'm making oxtails. Um, I know people usually make them like, you know, with the brown and the burnt sugar and everything. That I know how to make it that way. But today, because it's so late, it's already um, almost 6 p.m. my time. And oxtails really have to cook for a few. I'm not going to burn the sugar and everything. I'm just going to use some brown gravy, you know, make some yellow rice and corn. And boom, boom, boom. So the reason I got two pots here is because um, I started cooking some earlier. I didn't finish. Um, I had to get some more. So I'm gonna let this pot cook for like 20 minutes because this one already cooked for the 20 minutes. I'm gonna combine them and, you know, re-season them and everything like that. So it'll be well seasoned and put my little gravy on it and hit that. But we do have a guest here tonight and she goes by name, Cat Wax. So make sure she's gonna give you guys her information in the description link below. She's gonna give you her information to follow her as well. So I think she may have some questions for me okay so we up here baking sunday dinner but um earlier we talked a little bit about dialysis um what does a dinner time look like on the days that you do go to dialysis i'm sorry guys this is a lash in my eye <laughs> <laughs> no we can keep that let's just keep going um dinner time for me on a day for dialysis it just basically depends on the treatment I receive that day because sometimes I get treatment where I'm just like, I, I can't even move. I want to go home and lay down and, and relax. But other times, um, if I don't have, if I, if I don't have anything to just come and pop in a microwave, like it's all my stuff is like something that got to be prepared, then I'll stick it up, put my big boy drawers on and, and stick it out and make dinner. Um, but other than that, my other half, if I come home, dinner's already prepared um, those days for dialysis. So not to the time I really don't have to make dinner on those days because they will make it for me. But if they didn't cook, then dinner for me will be Uber Eats. <laughs> I'd be too tired to do anything, so. All right, so um, is there like different meals that you would have to eat while you're on dialysis? Like, okay, the days that you don't receive the dialysis treatment, mm -hmm. is there a different, um, menu that you have to follow than regular days that you don't receive treatment or is it just oh, kind of a blast like that <laughs> technically um dialysis comes with its own diet it's called a renal diet if if i correct me if i'm wrong in the comments renal diet means kidney diet because renal i think kidney I think renal means kidney. When they say renal failure, it's kidney failure. So I'm just gonna go with renal means kidney. But it's called a renal diet, and honestly, I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't know what's on there. I'm I'm vision impaired, so I've never read the list. But I know certain things I'm not supposed to eat. And I know certain things I am supposed to eat. I can't really go into a play by play with that list just because everybody's different. Because diabetes and high blood pressure, everything plays into that. So I can't give you guys options or anything like that. Um, I know later in the later and maybe a later video, I can probably get the list and post it up for um, anybody who's interested in that renal diet. They could dialysis patients do have a specific diet they have to follow. Um, you're really not supposed to eat salt, potassium. You have to watch your potassium, your salt, your phosphorus. For those who don't know what phosphorus is, me neither, but they told me to watch out for it. So, um, you have to watch out for things like that. You can't have too much potassium. You can't have too much phosphorus. You can't have too much um, calcium. So, it just play, everything plays off of each other. So, I will post that later. I will post it in maybe like the link or I do a video on, on it and we'll go over the list of what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat. But if you are on dialysis or um, headed that way, your nutritionist will provide you with that list because there's certain things. Um, I know definitely star fruit. Anybody on dialysis or have kidney failure, please do not eat star fruit. That is poisonous to your system. Um, I know also the dairy. Excuse me, guys, it's my shirt a little messy. I've been seasoning and, cook and cooking oxtails and stuff. So, and I know I look a little, a little rough, but due to COVID, COVID got me looking like a runaway 
something. <laughs> I don't want to say slave because you, you know, just said. It. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, COVID got me looking a little rough right now. You know, my hair changed to cover. It was red. I colored it for my birthday, so it was red. But I know I look a little rough. But give me about another week. My next video, definitely, you guys gonna see a, a different person. But um. Yeah, you're not supposed to eat certain things like cheese and dairy and, and like but any on cream. But the day like of, does it matter like the no. day of? This is just a diet you're going to have to... Follow like, for the rest of your life. Okay. Every day. Dialysis days or no days, that diet is remains the same. And be careful on your fluids because you cannot drink... They really require... They don't require it, but they suggest that dialysis people um, or dialysis patients or p people with kidney or renal failure, however you want to say it, they really suggest them to only drink 32 ounces of water a day. Um, just because when you start dialysis or you own dialysis, it's easier to pull that fluid off because it's harder to pull more fluid off you because you start crashing and getting headaches and stuff like that. And your blood pressure is con consistently dropping. If you have high blood pressure, it's going to drop. If you don't have high blood pressure, it's going to drop. So you just have to watch your fluids and stuff like that. But the diet remains the same regardless. Okay, so how... So watching the fluids, that's every day as well, or is that yes. just preparing? So it's you kind day. of restricted on beverages. Yeah. Like. So beverages, fruits, jellos, popsicles, ice cream, anything that let me take ice cream out because you're not supposed to eat ice cream on renal diets. Um, anything that can potentially melt and turn into liquid, you're not supposed to have much of like oh no i can eat jello ice all day long so. you can eat ice but you oh, have to be okay. careful oh, you cannot what? eat like how you go get them 32 cups that 32 <laughs> cups of ice um even though it's 32 ounces of ice ice melts and you know how you get a big cup of ice and then when when it melts it'd be like that much in there like it's like a little bit so even though it's like a little bit you have to be careful because that 32 ounces can push you over the limit of what you're supposed to drink a day. Cause you can, you don't really realize that you can eat soup and that quart of soup just went to your part of your 32 ounces. I mean, you drink water, that, that water just went to your 32 ounces. So it's, it's a restriction on it. it okay, is. so I'm kind of gathering, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm kind of gathering the, the process of dialysis is mm -hmm. just removing like your liquid intake from your body because the kidneys would regularly do that. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong or? No, you're absolutely right. Um, so when the kidneys are not working, um, what it is, the kidneys is not filtering out because a lot of people on dialysis does not make their own urine anymore. I would have said pee, but I think that's a little vulgar. But a lot of people on dialysis don't make their urine anymore. So their kidneys is producing that protein and every, it's supposed to produce the protein to get that, to filter all your toxins and everything out your blood and stuff like that. But because your kidneys are not working, your body is holding on to salt, which salt retains water. A lot of things retains water, which when I first, okay, so if I could, if I take you guys back to when I first found out that I had kidney disease, how I first found out was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how I first found out was I was working, I used to be a manager at this company. I don't know if I could say the company on here because I don't want them to like copyright or anything, but I used to work for a company and I and I was the manager. So you can tell what type of company it is. Okay. I worked at a pharmacy. Is that good? Yeah, or can I get fine. a name? No, that's good. Okay. So yeah, I worked at a pharmacy. Um, I was the manager of a pharmacy retail store and the managers, we normally move around. Had I been a cashier, I would have never known because um, my ankle started to get swollen. So I'm thinking that, oh, it's because I'm working because at that time being a manager, I was working 60 and 70 hours a week. <clears throat> so I'm just thinking my ankles are a little swollen. I'm like, oh, they're a little swollen because I'm working too much. So I, I took off maybe like three to four days and tried to get my ankles together. And that's where it started. I didn't notice that they were swollen because of the fluid. I'm just thinking, man, okay, my blood pressure high or whatever. I didn't really know I had high blood pressure at the time either. So I'm not still paying on mine. So one day um, I was working and I was doing my beer cooler and I'm in the beer. It's like a beer, how can I say? It's like a beer room pretty much. And it got all the beers stacked up and <clears throat> I started throwing up a lot. 
And I'm like, my ankle swollen, I'm throwing up. I know I ain't pregnant. So at this point, it Were gotta be sure? something. Just say I was sure. Like, I was like, I know I ain't Did pregnant. You know who the baby daddy was? I don't know, but we was gonna figure it out because I'm like, something ain't right. My ankle's swollen. I'm tired. I'm throwing up. This <laughs> way, I was really freaking out. So I'm like, something is definitely wrong because this is not normal for me because I'm used to I'm used to working, you know, 15, 16 hour days, like early in the morning to late night. I'm used to that because I was at that point I had been in management for 10 years, so I was used to that. So I'm like, why is my ankle swollen? So. Then after that, I started noticing uh, when I was urine, it was foam. It was like a like a foam substance, and I was like, okay, definitely something wrong. So I looked it up, and the first thing that came up was kidney disease. And I'm like, no, not me. Like I don't got that. Like I'm not even gonna wish it on myself. I don't got that. So I'm steady in denial. Like I don't have that, you know. So after that, I've always been. Um, I've always had a a. Uh, how can I explain it? I've always been like slim medium, if I want to say, I don't know how to pronounce, how to say it. Like, I've always had like broad shoulders, but I had a small frame. Like, I didn't have really weight on me. So, and I'm like, okay, I'm gaining weight and my ankle's swollen, I'm peeing foam, I'm throwing up. I'm definitely pregnant at this point. So, I get on the phone, I call my significant other like, look, bitch, we got to situation here like I'm pregnant and no all jokes aside I, I did go to my doctor and he said no you're fine that everything is okay and I'm like no 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 everything ain't okay so I started still gaining weight at this at this moment I'm like I'm way beyond my average size my average size was like 180 190 170 I stayed in that range for years I've never grown over 190 at this point I was 215 pounds and I'm definitely saying something is wrong. I've never been that big since like when I was a kid, I was that big. I was like in the eighth grade at 235 and I found out I was diabetic. So I lost all the weight and I'm getting bigger and I'm like, something is definitely wrong. Like I'm just gaining weight, but I know my eating regimen remained the same. So I went to the hospital because one day I woke up, I couldn't breathe. You guys, like I was like, <sighs> like trying to get it out and I couldn't I would take two steps and be like about to pass out and another thing I noticed was um I would be in the middle of the summer and I would be freezing cold like I would be so cold like to the point where I'm in like it's hot out it'd be like 80 90 degrees here in Florida and I'm wrapped up in a blanket I'm wrapped up in a blanket with sheets and I got there, I would literally go sit in my car and turn my heat on and let that let that heat cool me down because I was so cold. So and that was another sign. It was the fluid that was backing up on me in my kidneys. And a lot of that caused heart failure. They thought I had heart failure because the fluid was pushing on my heart. So my heart wasn't pumping the way that it should have been. And me and my significant other went to the hospital and I'm like, okay, they was like, you have heart failure. So we, yeah, we cry, we hysterical, cause I'm like, this can't be possible. Like I know I ain't got heart failure, I'm gonna die, or whatever. And they was like, we have to do more tests. So it came back that my creatinine level, and the creatinine in kidneys, guys, um, I forgot the, the points it's supposed to be, but I think it's supposed to be under seven or under five, it's one of those. But mine at the time was like 14. So they was like, no, it's not heart failure. You have kidney disease because the kidney disease, if anybody knows dialysis or kidney failure, anything, it can throw off a false positive for heart disease. So I went to the hospital and this is the very first time. This is not the time they put me on dialysis. The very first time um, they were supposed to drain the fluid. They didn't drain the fluid. They left the fluid on me. They changed my blood pressure. They, I found out I had high blood pressure. Um, they changed, they put me on different blood pressure medicines to try to see which one was working. And after that, I went on from February to maybe August, and I had lost in the matter of two days. I went from, by the time I got to the doctor, the kidney doctor, because mind you, I was in the hospital for a week. I was still 215 pounds, but the fluid was still building up on me. So by the time I went to my kidney nephrologist, 
um, I was 251 pounds. And I was like, I know you're lying. Like, I, I'm not that big because there's no way. Like, I've never been 250 pounds in my life. And she was like, no, you're 250 pounds. So they put me on this water pill called Torsamide. That pill worked wonders. It brought me down from 251 to 177 because I wasn't eating because the kidney failure also kills your appetite so you don't eat. So because I wasn't eating, I had no weight on me. It was all fluid. It brought me down to one. I was 177 pounds. So once they got my kidneys under control, my appetite started to come back, which is why I'm this size now. But yeah, my appetite started coming back. And then after August, November, um, I went to the hospital because I had this sharp pain in my leg. And I was like, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't sleep. Like when I sleep, I would sit up with my back to the bedpost because my, my leg and my back was hurting so bad. It started in my leg and it went up to my back and it was hurting so bad. So I finally went to the hospital. They checked my, my blood and everything. They said I had sciatica in my right leg. And then they also said, you don't have kidney disease anymore. You have kidney failure. So imagine me sitting there all night and they just like, hey, you have kidney failure. So now my mind is just like, what? Like another thing. And mind you guys, in this time frame, in the middle of the time frame, I lost my sight as well. So I was battling with kidney, kidney disease, blindness, and then kidney failure. So they did an emergency surgery. They said they had to do an emergency surgery, put the calf in. They pulled the rest of, cause I, at that from August, like I said, I did drop to 177, but by the time I went back in November, I was two four, I was 220. So the fluid started backing up back on me. And when they did dialysis, they pulled it back off and I was 180. So by the time I got out of the hospital and I was able to eat again, um, started gaining weight again. So that's where we at now. I'm gonna go ahead and stir these oxtails, you guys, just because they've been cooking for a couple of minutes and I just wanna stir them up and get all the, the flavor and stuff around. So, um, you found out through um, just seeing how you felt and you were feeling different and noticing you couldn't do things the same like you used to, mm -hmm. but would this have been caught through maybe like annual exams? Like say they were, um, can, is this something that they could have caught like through testing or something? Um... I'm I'm pretty sure um, had I went to the doctor sooner when I first noticed the signs, because mind you, I started noticing signs in 2017. I didn't go to the hospital to 2019. So my kidneys, had I probably, it's, I kind of brought it on myself because I, had I went and got checked regularly, and that's another thing, and, and don't but take this wrong. let's say we, we um, you didn't feel these things, but you oh. just went to your annual exam and when they do their testing, do they find things like this? Yeah, they could find it because once they do your blood test, your creatinine levels will show. Your creatinine levels will show. So, the, am I over the pot? Uh, yeah, you don't want to. Which way should I? No, you were over it. Right but, here? Yeah, but it's lightly poured so it don't go past. But, um... Yeah, with your with annual blood test and going to get regular checkups, they can catch it just because your it is showing your creatinine levels. Um, your creatinine levels will show kidney like problems with your kidney, liver, anything like that. Your blood test. So we have to just take care of ourselves. As as male, I know males normally don't want to go get checked up, and and this is nothing against culture vulture, vultures or anything like that. But as African Americans, we are prone to higher. Um, blood pressure and diabetes and everything like that. So because we do eat one, we do eat a lot of pork. We eat a lot of salt. We love our salt and we love our pork and we love everything that's kind of bad for us. So it's best that we do get checked up on the regular because I'm only 30 years old, guys. I just turned 30 on the 31st of August and I'm in a position where it's like I'm not saying my life is over or anything like that, but it, it is a struggle being 30, being this young and can't see and can't um, do anything because dialysis does take up a lot of your time. I do it three times a week and it's, it's exhausting and it takes up your time. So by the time you get out of dialysis, you really don't want to do anything else but just go home. So, you know, it can be caught with testing. So get tested, um, test everything. Don't, don't just go and be like, oh, 
I ain't got no cold, so I'm good. Test everything. Get, get, just get tested. Get test, Get your blood test done, regular checkups. If the doctors don't want to test you for a kidney, kidney disease because it is real, you let them know, like, hey, test my blood for kidney disease, test my blood for di diabetes. I want to be tested for high blood pressure, syphilis, gonorrhea, everything. You know, just check it out. Just check it out. You don't want to be in my position, trust me. Like. Okay, guys, I hope you learned something from this lesson from Mighty Mac. And um, stay tuned. Mighty we have Mac, a whole Mighty bunch Mac, more Mac. coming. I'm sorry, I done took over your channel. This is your channel. <laughs> Go it's ahead. Cool. It's Go cool. Ahead. Go ahead. And but once again, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you stay to the end of this video, I appreciate it. Click like, like share, share, subscribe. Share. Comment, tell your friends, yes. tell your friends to tell their friends, tell your homegirls to tell our homegirls. We're going to get this popping. Thank you guys for so much for coming and cooking with me. And enjoy the rest of my videos on the Almighty Mac. And trust me, more is coming. So stay tuned because we got this. Okay, so uh, we back to these oxtails. So tell me a little bit about like, yes. um, you done prepared it, you seasoned it um what what what's gonna happen from this point when are we eating when are we sitting down and and so, what's gonna be with this meal like what's the rest of it when you make oxtails it's always gonna be entertainment when you come see mike because i am that i'm just entertaining you know i got some more videos where you guys are actually see when i say entertainment because i am gonna be the blind artist soon enough i know we got stevie wonder and we got ray charles was this only two blind people that song i'm blind i rap I'm legally. Well, blind. I sing, so that's different. <laughs> but I'm saying, I don't think no blind rappers. So we coming back. out. We used to be the cousin crown. We're going to be the cousins that went blind. And we're going <laughs> to blow up on y'all, like, seriously. So check that out later because it's probably going to be new music coming in the collaboration. But with these oxtails, oxtails do take a long, long time to cook. I should have cooked them. I should have started earlier. That's why I didn't cook in my pressure cooker because I do have a little multi. Um, it's a multi-purpose cooker, you know, if you don't know how to cook rice, get one of these, baby. It will cook your rice superb, you hear me? So, it's a pressure cooker. It's also a crock pot, and it's also a multi-cooker. Um, it cooks rice and everything you want to throw in there. And stay tuned, you guys, because I am... Thanksgiving is right around the corner. I've never made a sweet potato pie, but when I make it, you guys are going to be the first to watch me make this pie. Is it going to be better than patty pie? Yes. Patty, I'm sorry, no tea, no shade, girl. I don't like your pie like that. No. But <laughs> it is, I'm just saying, like, it's going to be good. You know, it ain't going to make you want to sing. It ain't going to make you do all that. But it will make you be like, damn, how did he, how did he do this? And hopefully I can get it dis distributed out to people. But, you know. So comment in my link. If you guys want a pie, I'm going to hook y'all up. It's going to be a test pie. But you guys are going to be the first to watch me make this pie. So stay tuned on that because I have a lot of events that's coming up. Um, I do. I am going to have like a little family gathering for Thanksgiving. And I do want to record that because my family is entertaining. Guys, I'm, when I tell you, it's a real family. We fight, we argue, we love on each other. And it's just it's just pure love. Like, you know, we, we are a regular family. But I do have a Christmas event coming up. My significant other birthday is coming up. So it's probably going to be a couple of videos on that. I'm going to show you guys how to make my mixed drinks. But stay tuned because we coming in. But these oxtails are going to be busting. I just burnt my hand. But we're going to keep it moving because I'm, I'm going to play it off like that. It didn't hurt, but it's it. But these oxtails, back to the oxtails. I got them seasoned. I got my bell peppers in there. I wish I had my onions, but I forgot to get the onions. So I use minced onion. Um, I got the bell pepper. I did have red when I made my meatloaf, but that's gone. So now I just use the green bell pepper. And I'm going to make some rice, some yellow rice with my brown gravy and my corn. You know, stuff like that. I really wanted to make some biscuits, but unfortunately, we ran out of time. So, but hopefully, you guys can come back when all this is done. And I can show you the finished product. But thank you for tuning in. And we are out here with the almighty Mac, baby. Trust this is your girl, Cadillac. Like.